what historians are actually good at, and you might have guessed it because I'm not a big fan of them, how to replace them with a unified namespace. So historians are actually good at giving the person on the shop floor a very good insight into the production. About the other misconceptions, we already did a video before that. Um, they will be linked in the video disk. Open source databases really struggle with three points compared to historians. First, they have an open source database has no way of inserting data into it. They always rely on third party systems to push data in there. And historian has it all included. It's a single UI. Second, an open source database has usually no visualization tools in there for basic analysis, to, to easily find your text, whatever. They always rely on, on, on third party tools. Maybe except InfluxDB, that's an exception. They also have good UI for that. And three, an open source database tool has usually no way to model data. It's also, again, relied on third party tools. So something, so data modeling, I mean something where, for example, the PyAssy framework really excels that. But thinking now about modern architectures, do we even need to do this one-on-one -on -one comparison? What wouldn't be the UNS a better replacement? So if you haven't watched the video about the three approaches of connecting factory systems, I really recommend you to do that now. We also put that in the video description because there we explain the fundamental architectural difference between historians and a unified namespace. And I would argue that the unified namespace is actually better suited for most of the cases. And with it, its ecosystem growing, because unified namespace and uh, all the tools around it, they get grow older over time, more and more people use it, more and more companies come up. You can mostly replace a lot of the features that really make up the historian and where open source databases struggle with. So for example, the first point, in the unified namespace, you have protocol converters. And there are countless tools that help you to connect to PLCs and push the data into MQDT, into unified namespace. Node-RED and Benches UH are two of the tools that we are using, but there are also countless other open source and commercial tools available to do it. Second, the realization part, I need to agree it's still not ideal in the unified namespace, but with tools like Grafana or maybe Tableau, you can get at least some stuff done. But I agree, like easy clicking, clicking buttons and uh, uh, or finding tags and comparing two tags, the average of it ends quite difficult. But point three, in the unified namespace for this data modeling or the equivalent to the PyAssid framework, you can use data ops, reprocessing, or however you may want to call it, to rename tags, to reorder them, put them into structures, have log logical architectures like object-oriented programming style, uh, where you have like a, an axis always has like speed and uh, maybe a temperature and a vibration. Uh, a CNC machine always consists out of three to I think six or seven seven axes. Um, this factory has three has three CNC machines, and now you have this inheritance and this whole structure. So we see that except maybe case two, and maybe some weird edge case with compliance and uh, uh, and, and others that will also change change over time. The more modern architecture of a unified namespace, which also enables real-time data, you can replace an historian with it. So in summary, if you currently have an historian, just leave it, leave it be there, compliant, etc. But you should not install and set up a new historian in the year 2024.